Well, thanks very much for the opportunity to present, guys. I'm really excited about uh, this one. So, um, project I'm presenting today is Collingwood Yards, located between Johnson and Perry Street in Collingwood. So we won a design competition about seven years ago. Um, and really the brief was to turn what was then a derelict complex of buildings into a home for a lot of the kind of creative businesses, artists, um, galleries, radio stations that were being kicked out of Collingwood by rising prices. So the first thing we did was actually commission our friend Tom Ross, who I know you guys know as well, um, to do, we almost, we call it a sort of love letter to the existing building. It was really for us to be able to sort of reimagine, re reappreciate the existing building and the qualities of it. And I think out of that process, we realized that we wanted to do as little as possible to the existing buildings. So the number one challenge was, how do we actually make this complex of buildings truly a part of the broader neighborhood? So we've got this grand sort of um, Art Deco type facade, DDoc Modern, I think it's called. Um, it had this grand sort of entrance in the middle here. But the problem with this is it doesn't really say welcome. It doesn't say welcome everybody. Um, so what we did is we took what we've been sort of jokingly referring to as the path of most resistance, and that is convincing Heritage Victoria Council and everyone sort of involved um, to punch this brand new opening through the facade. And thankfully we were successful because this has really unlocked the project from a circulation point of view. So. Here's an axonometric of the project. Um, and you can really see that there's that sort of central courtyard, which we wanted to unlock. So the, the first move was making this big connection through to the courtyard. That allowed us to give uh, access on a very gentle ramp. Then there's a secondary access through the back. So it sort of becomes this very porous part of the neighborhood with all the sort of secondary and primary entries. So the opening itself, you know, we wanted to sort of strip it a lot of the kind of signifiers of building entry. We wanted to make it sort of feel urban in scale. And look, if we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted and we're walking around the site, I'd love to tell you the story of these gold columns, but I don't have time in the next sort of six and a half minutes. Um, the idea with the materiality is a sort of perforate, micro perforated stainless steel to sort of suck the colors of the courtyard and the street through. Um, and we worked hard with our lighting designers. Uh, we really wanted this to be a building that could have a completely different character and come alive at night. So, um, you know, it's got a fully programmable LED system that works through the whole precinct. And especially through the central walkway, you get sort of all these really surprising uh, lighting effects. And the main reason we wanted to do this is we wanted to have a sort of sense of spectacle and drama at night during these sort of events. Um, so here's an axonometric of the existing. You can see the big challenge of that beautiful courtyard in the middle, which was really landlocked. So the second move we made, the first one was this cut through from Johnson Street. The second one was to take what was originally a little dead end laneway and then an internal space and turn it into a little mini arcade. I'll take you on that journey now. So stepping into that laneway, we then took these windows and cut them down to the ground. Now, often the temptation with these sort of things is to put a big black steel loop around them, you know, and say, here's a new opening. Well, we wanted to show the fact that we had cut through a window. So we left these sort of little traces and remnants. Um, that was uh, just after we cut the windows down and you've got this sort of beautiful sunlight coming in from the courtyard. And of course, uh, we put these new shop fronts in. And um, of course, uh, Michael, you and your team did a wonderful fit out there uh, of the Uro bookshop. And there's, a pottery, and there's a pottery shop next door and social studio. But that is this little mini shopping arcade and it allows you to step into this courtyard. And what it's done is it's meant that this courtyard's become a part of the neighborhood and it's become a really public space that's used a lot, not only in an informal way, but actually formally through markets and sort of it's become a real event hub for people as well. Existing conditions and axiometric at the back. So this second big challenge was to say, if we've got these wonderful buildings, even though they were pretty derelict, how can we get them up to code by doing the least possible to them? So rather than stuffing around the existing building too much, we put the new lifts and stairs on the outside of the buildings and try to make them sculptural objects um, in themselves. And this is really the sort of circulation pattern through. We worked with Simone Bliss and the team at SBLA Landscape on the public realm. And uh, together we worked on this sort of amphitheater type space uh, really to sort of connect the two levels. Um, and I understand Nick, you and your team are doing a, a new addition there adjacent to that amphitheater, which is really exciting. Um, so um, the lift shaft and staircase, you can see here an axonometric, and then here um, uh, as a sort of overall view. Part of this sort of crappy photo, but this is my daughter, and we're at the top of the Yu Yangs here. And I, I really took inspiration from the way the National Park Service 
actually puts these very sculptural staircases where there's a beautiful geological feature. Or in this case, actually, to get people right up, get the public to circulate up through the building and also to appreciate the lovely trees we've got on site from a canopy point of view as well. And I suppose just give you a different perspective on the precinct. So these three lift shafts were clipped onto the side of the existing brick buildings. Here's a view of the third brick lift shaft. And this is really as well showing the sort of porosity of the site. And the main intention with this brick lift shaft was to get the public actually circulating up into those upper levels. So you can see here its relationship between the upper levels of the Perry Street building and the courtyard. Um, there's some of Simone's lovely landscape in the foreground. And what's been wonderful about these sculptural sort of stairs and lifts is that they've really um, become a sort of uh, a framework on which art can happen. So there's a lot of projection art that happens on them. We also have got some custom square bricks for the corners and turned a bunch of bricks on 90 degrees, allowed us to actually illuminate the top almost like a sort of lantern. Um, and yeah, but performances happen quite often on these platforms, which has been really uh, wonderful to see. Existing conditions. So a lot of what we did was actually about stripping back layers and opening up and getting the building to sort of breathe again. Um, so here is an external, what was an external corridor had been glassed in. We then stripped that glazing away really allowed it to be a much more sort of open space. It was these beautiful views back to the trees. And, and again, it's about getting the public up through those spaces. Um, if we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted, there's lots of details on site I want to point out to you, but the strategy was that the larger interventions were made very obvious. And as we came down through the scales, I really wanted to blur the boundaries between what was new and old and blur that kind of story because I didn't want to just sort of Botox the building back to this kind of new state, not at all. Wanted to actually keep all the layers, some of them ugly, some of them, you know, all different sort of voices and, and layers that sort of happen on the building. So that's where we sort of blurred a lot of those, um, I suppose, layers of history. And I suppose, um, Nick, you and Michael both know the project uh, very well. And look, the rest of the sort of jury team there, look, I'd be really, really keen if we are shortlisted to take you through, because what I haven't been able to convey to you uh, in this presentation really is the fact that it is a thriving community and that it is a really fantastic interface between the public and the creative um, uh, industries within um, uh, the, the, the buildings. One minute and, remaining. Uh, thank you very much. And I think the other thing that, you know, I really wanted to point out is that we really use this project um, to be a sort of celebration of being proximate and physical space. You know, we're all sort of digitally connected, but this is very much about celebrating the sort of happenstance, the kind of bumping into each other and the kind of collaboration and new ideas that start forming when you're in the spaces together. Um, thank you very much.